Okay, at the beginning of the book, before before chapter one even starts, there's a very special poem that was found in the desk of HPB, Elena Blavatsky, after she passed away. And this is very profound, very meaningful to us, and it, it has lots of significance. So I'm going to read this before we even open up to chapter one. <clears throat> there is a road, steep and thorny, beset with perils of every kind, but yet a road, and it leads to the very heart of the universe. I can tell you how to find those who will show you the secret gateway that opens inward only and closes fast behind the neophyte forevermore. There is no danger that dauntless courage cannot conquer. There is no trial that spotless purity cannot pass through. There is no difficulty that strong intellect cannot surmount. For those who win onwards, there is reward past all telling, the power to bless and save humanity. For those who fail, there are other lives in which success may come. I think that this is um, especially pertinent for a variety of reasons. One is that uh, Thursday, uh, just three days ago, was White Lotus Day a special day for all theosophists around the world. Uh, it's the day each year where we remember the life of Helena Blavatsky. She passed away on May 8, uh, 1891, so 123 years ago, if my math is correct. Um, but that short life, uh, she lived uh, only 59 years made a tremendous difference in the world. This is an individual to whom we owe a tremendous amount. In fact, few people know that if you look up the meaning of New Age, it is connected with her name. There would be no New Age movement as we know it without H.P. Blavatsky and the teachings that she brought through to the, um, to the Western world. And what she brought through were these ancient wisdom teachings that had existed for thousands of years in other cultures, um, but were almost entirely unknown in the Western world. There was a, a few things that I want to point out about um, this thing, this, uh, it's not a poem, but a whatever, this uh, list of information and uh, suggestions. First, she tells us that she can tell us how to find those who know the secret gateway that opens inward only and closes fast behind the neophyte forevermore. And then she mentions three qualities that have to be developed in order for this neophyte, this aspirant, to make progress on this path. Obviously, she's talking about a path of enlightenment. The three qualities that she mentions are dauntless courage, spotless purity, and strong intellect. Now, these are three things that seem simple, but obviously require lifetimes of effort in order to uh, develop fully. Dauntless courage, spotless purity, and strong intellect, according to what she wrote, are the three qualities that we must absolutely develop if we want to reach the goal. Now, what is the goal? She puts it very plainly. It is to be able to bless and save humanity. It's not for anything personal. It's not for fame or fortune or glory. In fact, you will not gain any of those things by treading the path. But what you will gain is tremendous insight, tremendous enlightenment, and the ability to help your fellow human beings achieve the same goal. One thing that she doesn't really mention is that these are the goals of every great teacher to help 
lift up humanity. She often talked about lifting a little bit of the heavy karma of the human kingdom. It is true that we are in a, a phase of our human existence that is extremely difficult and painful at this time. Obviously, we have made it that way uh, ourselves to some extent because we haven't yet learned some of the uh, ways of the universe. We haven't put ourselves in tune with universal law, at least not completely yet. We're still trying to learn how these laws work. As uh, one of the adepts told us in the Mahatma letters, there is only one law in the entire universe. And all other laws come from that. That one law is the law of harmony. The law of harmony is the only law. And all others are subsets of that law. Whatever goes out of equilibrium or balance has to be rebalanced. And we see that in many different ways in life. So as we get into touch and into harmony with the universe and with this natural law of harmony, and obviously the law of karma is completely the same type of law, which is rebalancing and getting back into alignment, then everything becomes simple. We often get taken to task because we say several times in the book that life is simple, but we make it difficult. Well, we stick by what we say. Um, life is simple. It can be simple if we are willing to let it be. But too often we insist on trying to bend the law, the natural law, to meet our own goals, which usually have something to do with our personal needs. In, in Chapter 1, we talk a lot about um, the animal kingdom and the consciousness that in, in, um, inhabits animal bodies. I wonder if we were to ask an animal, is life easy or hard? I wonder what an animal would say. Since they don't have the same kind of ego that we have, would they say life is easy or hard? I don't think they would even have a, any concept. It, it would just be <clears throat> life is life. Natural. Life is life. Exactly. I, I think so. It right. is. I think it that's is. exactly right. It just is. Period. 